provided by... In the midst of chaos, I found there was within me an invincible calm. In the midst of tears, I found there was within me an invincible smile. I understand. And that makes me happy, for it says that no matter how hard the world pushes against me, within me, there's something stronger, something better, pushing right back. In the midst of life, be the reason someone smiles today. You know what? This has been a heck of a start to Bahamas yes. Week here at Bahamar. And I can tell you something. Tomorrow, Ian and I, we're swimming with sharks. What? Yeah. Bring yeah. it on. Ooh. All right. Well, are listen. We really? Yes, we are. If y'all right. are going to do it, then I think we... Happening now. It's a trial we've been waiting years for. The trial of Otis McCain. It began this morning. I'll take you inside the courtroom. That's coming up. They're tricky and they're manipulative, and you see them online all the time. Coming up, we'll explain dark patterns and what's being done about them. And have you noticed a haze on the horizon? We're going to be talking about the Saharan dust and a return to a steamy weather pattern. The News at 5 starts right now. At first at five, lawmakers leave. Some Texas Democrats have left the state to avoid voting on a controversial bill. The special session clock ticking right now. That's the message Texas House Speaker Dade Phelan is sending to state Democrats who are trying to stall election integrity legislation for a second time. And today, a number of House Democrats raising eyebrows when they left Austin for Washington, D.C. before Republicans could even really start debating a voting bill in the special session convened by Governor Greg Abbott. You may remember back in May, Democrats walked out of the Texas Capitol to block the election overhaul bill. One of the reasons the special session was called. The election bill would outlaw 24-hour polling places, ban ballot drop boxes, and increase access for partisan poll watchers. In a statement today, House Speaker Phelan, a Republican, said in part, quote, these actions put at risk state funding that will deny thousands of hardworking staff members and their families a paycheck, health benefits, and retirement investment so that legislators who broke quorum can flee to Washington, D.C. in private jets. The special session clock is ticking. I expect all members to be present in our Capitol in order to immediately get to work on these issues. Phelan also said the Texas House will use every available resource under the Texas Constitution and the unanimously passed House rules to secure a quorum. Under House rules, the main entrance to the hall of the doors leading out of the hall can be locked and no member permitted to leave without written permission of the speaker. Names of present members are recorded and absentees who have no sufficient excuse may by order of the majority of those present be sent for and arrested to be returned with their attendance secured and retained. Our Jesse DeGoyado has been reaching out to some of the Democrats who have left Austin. We're gonna hear more from Jesse coming up at six o'clock. Also first at five, a man accused of gunning down a detective right outside police headquarters goes on trial. Videos and 911 calls played during testimony today in the first day of the capital murder trial of Otis McCain. He's accused in the death of SAPD Detective Benjamin Marconi, all part of evidence presented today by the prosecution team. Our Eric Hernandez has been closely following the trial all day long, giving us updates. She now joins us live from the Bear County Courthouse. So the testimony has wrapped up for the day, Erica. Actually, Ursula, no, it hasn't. There's still a witness on the stand right now. In fact, there's been a total of five witnesses to take the stand on the behalf of the state today. The first to take the stand was Eric Jimenez, who is part of the Fusion Center at Public Safety Headquarters. They manage the surveillance cameras around the building. He spoke about being called in to look back at video from November 20th, 2016. That video you are seeing here shows the time the alleged suspect walked up to the vehicle and then walk away and then drive off breaking a traffic gate in the parking lot. This afternoon, 911 calls were played, three from witnesses to the shooting. Here's some of that audio from those calls. Now, another call that was pl later played came the next day from a man saying he recognized the suspect as Otis McCain and he recognized him and his car since he had just sold him tires 
for that car. Now, as for the defense, very little cross-examination was done, nor did they have opening statements, but they did dispute that third call that we were just talking about, saying that it was hearsay. The judge eventually overruled that call. Steve, Ursula? Now, during that first discussion of the calls, the jury was not present. Why is that? Yeah, Ursula, there was that debate going on between the defense and the prosecution. It was a very tense debate between the two about whether that call should be played. And like I just said, the, the judge overruled it, but said that it could possibly be played later in court. Erica, I know there were a lot of people that testified today. Some were just record keepers. Some saw Otis McCain at different parts. What other significant testimony took place today? So one of the first testimonies to take place was from a man named Kevin Wilkerson, who is now an SAPD officer, but at the time was a civilian. He was working at the lobby at that time of that morning, and he was the one that to identify McCain walking in and then walking out around 745 the morning of November 20th. The second officer to take the stand is Hector Salas, and he is still on the stand right now. He is part of the crime scene unit. We'll be, talking, we'll be hearing more from his testimony later on at six as he is still on the stand right now and he was a part of the crime scene unit. Steve, Ursula? That's our Eric Hernandez live from the Bear County Courthouse. Thank you, Erica. But we're going to continue to follow the trial of Otis McCain, live streaming it gavel to gavel on KSAT.com and KSAT TV. You can also stick with us on air for the latest developments in this case. Meantime, an update now on a deadly crash that ended in a fire. The victim has been identified as 23-year-old James Gabriel Garza. He died last Monday after he crashed along Loop 1604 in Valero Way. San Antonio police believe that Garza crashed before the car began to burn. No other vehicles were involved in the crash and no one else was hurt. A 73 year old man is dead after he was swarmed by bees in South Bear County. The sheriff's office says he was stung hundreds of times along State Highway 16 South. That's where he was found unresponsive. They say that a woman tried to resuscitate him and was also caught up in that swarm of bees and stung. The extent of her injuries not known at this time. We're being told that the man died at Southwest General Hospital. Public unrest in Cuba with protesters taking to the streets over food and fuel shortages there. The outcries for change also erupting in cities all across the globe that have human expatriates showing up there in solidarity. ABC's Rena Roy has this story. In a rare sight, the streets of Havana and Santiago de Cuba filled with protesters demanding change from their government. These are the largest demonstrations in nearly three decades in a country notorious for cracking down on resistance. This woman voicing her concerns directly to President Miguel Diaz-Canel asking for COVID-19 vaccines with a rise in new cases and a shortage of food and medicine. An economic crisis forcing people to wait hours in line for food scarce since the pandemic. The president blaming U.S. restrictions on exports, foreign funds and travel, calling on those loyal to the regime to confront the protesters. In Barcelona, Cuban expats taking to the streets outside the Cuban consulate. And in Florida, thousands showing up in solidarity, even shutting down some streets in Miami over the weekend, less than 100 miles away from the communist island. It's been a lot, long time coming. We just want to be free. Many urging the U.S. government to step in. I want to see the president to see something and to do something for Cuba now. We have to make sure that their message today and every day moving forward isn't lost and that the true nature of this barbaric regime is exposed. President Biden released a statement saying in part that the U.S. stands with the Cuban people, calling them brave for asserting their fundamental rights. He's also asking the regime to hear them out and meet their needs. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. 
Well, we do have some rain out there actually this evening, just in time for the evening commute. A couple of pop up thunderstorms have developed. First, let's go ahead and take a look at Hallettsville. That's where the heaviest rain is at the moment and in northwestern Gonzalez County. But near Canyon Lake, Smithson Valley, Startsville area, and also along 281, you can see there's some heavy rain, some flashes of lightning. This is all forming along an outflow boundary, which is just now starting to move into Bear County. So I do expect for us to see some isolated rain over the next couple of hours around San Antonio metro area. Temperatures this afternoon have been toasty 92 in Eagle Pass and in Del Rio, but up near Canyon Lake 76 because of the rain cooled air up there in mixed backyard 91 in Universal City. Sun is going to set at 836 with it. Our rain chances go and it'll be a muggy evening. If you've seen that haze on the horizon, that's because of Saharan dust. So I have a look ahead at what we can expect in that department and another in depth look at the radar. Ursula. Thank you so much, Sarah. Search and rescue team still sifting through debris at the site once known as the Champlain Tower South in Surfside, Florida. Crews now reaching the lower layers of the demolished, demolished condo, bringing vehicles crushed under the rubble to the surface. Those crews have been working day and night to try to find anyone unaccounted for. Today, the death toll from the condo collapse is at 94. Another 22 people remain missing. We have a recall to warn you about General Motors and Chevrolet recalling hundreds of thousands of trucks over an issue with airbags. The recall includes 400,000 2015 and 2016 Chevy pickup trucks and GMC Sierra 1500, 2500 and 3500 models. The airbags in the trucks could deploy without reason. There's been at least three instances reported in all three cases. No one was inside the vehicle. GMC and Chevy plan to notify owners about a fix starting August 16th. They'll send more notices as replacement parts become more available. Concerns over the Delta variant and new cases growing all across the United States. Five states now considered hot spots: Florida, Louisiana, Arkansas, Missouri, and Nevada. As Camilla Bernal explains, about a third of more than 19,000 new cases are from those five states alone. Rising COVID-19 case numbers in U.S. hotspots as the Delta variant rapidly spreads. Wherever vaccination rates are low and you have a high percentage of the virus isolates or the Delta variant, which is twice as transmissible as the original lineage, you're going to have lots and lots of COVID cases and lots of lots of hospitalizations. A third of new cases in the U.S. coming from these five states, according to a medical analyst. To see a potential third wave is disheartening. Uh, and it's disappointing uh, because, quite frankly, it's preventable. More than 99% of U.S. COVID-19 deaths in June were among unvaccinated people, according to the CDC. It's not vaccinated people who are being hospitalized today. It's unvaccinated people. This as confusion remains over a booster shot. Pfizer virtually briefing U.S. government officials regarding the potential need for another dose. But the guidance from the CDC is that as of now, a third shot is not needed. What is needed is first time vaccinations. Our vaccines work incredibly well against all the variants, including the Delta variant. According to the CDC, the daily pace of people becoming fully vaccinated has dropped 84% since the mid April peak. If you get vaccinated, you will be protected from dying. I'm Camila Bernal reporting. Dark patterns. It's when companies use confusing tactics to get you to agree to something you normally wouldn't. It could be as simple as getting you to unwittingly subscribe to unwanted emails. But the tactics being used more frequently online, there's now a way you can report them. How you can do it next. New at five, dark patterns. Even if you're not familiar with that term, if you use the internet, you have seen them. There are those tactics that some companies use to confuse or get you to agree to something that otherwise you would not have. As 1200 Size Marilyn Moritz reports, there's now a tip line so you can report them. 
Dark patterns, those manipulative messages that pop up even on mainstream apps and websites. You can often find them when registering for a new online account. Maybe you have to click a box to keep the company from bombarding you with emails. Dark patterns can also show up when you're unsubscribing or setting up stricter privacy settings. They can be annoying and worse. These manipulative practices can make people pay more than they should for a service or push them to agree to let a company collect an excessive amount of their personal data. And some tech experts say dark patterns disproportionately affect people of color or communities where English is a second language or there is less tech education. To combat the issue, Consumer Reports and partner advocates launched the Dark Patterns Tip Line, where people can anonymously submit dark patterns they see online. The tip line is meant to educate consumers and help researchers identify trends, spot repeat offenders, and advocate for better policy reforms. Tech editor Thomas Germain says learning to recognize different types of dark patterns can help you use the web and mobile apps more safely. Another way to avoid the traps is just slow down and really examine the language you're seeing or the buttons you're clicking. And don't assume that those default settings are the best ones. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. I never knew what those were called. There you go dark patterns. All right, let's take a live look outside with Sky 12. Notice the haze out there. Well, it's not humidity. It's the Saharan dust. And a lot of interest in the Saharan dust layer. It happens every year for us in the months of June through September. We get some of that uh, dust from the Saharan desert travels all the way over to San Antonio. And today is just one of the first days that we're actually seeing it this season. More on that a little bit later. But first, let's take a look at the radar. We have got a few storms popping up along an outflow boundary. And there's so many cool things on the radar. So excuse me while I nerd out for a bit. You can see very very clearly, here's the outflow boundary or the rain cooled air and right behind it. We're seeing a few storms pop up like in Comal County. We've got a couple of flashes of lightning out near Smithson Valley, Startsville and Canyon Lake. These are not severe, but they're practically stationary and they're putting down a lot of rain in a short amount of time and even some gusty winds as well. Now the heavier rain is really across parts of our communities that are closer to the coast west of Gonzales. And then in Hallettsville, we've had a lot of rain just over the last hour or so. In fact, I can push play on that and you can see some rainfall rates of an inch an hour. So I'm sure that those in Lavaca County have gotten an additional inch of rain on top of uh, the rain that they've already seen over the last several days. In fact, one of the emergency managers out there said that there is some minor flooding. Now notice how this outflow boundary has yet to really move further into Bear County. So over the next hour or two, we are going to have a few of these isolated downpours pop up and we'll keep you informed. Of course, now outside you can see that haze on the horizon. That's Saharan dust. The high temperature today, 90 degrees, once again, cooler than seasonably average. Just last year we were at 103 degrees today, so it's nice to have those cooler uh, temperatures, although it's not necessarily cool. It's hot and humid outside and we've got that dust to deal with. Here's a look at that Saharan dust forecast. So tomorrow we'll still have some dust in the the air air quality is actually OK right now, uh, but tomorrow we'll be seeing the dust dissipate even further. And then by the uh, e end of the week, we'll see potentially another plume of dust arrive as well. Again, this is very normal things that we normally see from June to September. What you can expect is when that cloud becomes more dense, some folks will have allergy like symptoms, itchy eyes and itchy throat. It'll create hazy skies like what we've seen and vibrant sunsets actually, and those plumes will come and go through September and we'll let you know when they're here. All right, in the weather pattern, we do have a stationary boundary to our north. That's why we've been able to see a few of these storms uh, start to pop up. Meanwhile, we've also got the sea breeze. And so over the next couple of days, we're only going to have a small chance each afternoon for an isolated shower or storm. We're not seeing any of those big rainmakers in our future anytime soon. So in the future cast tomorrow, starting off cloudy in the afternoon, we'll have some sun. And then once again, notice how the sea breeze uh, kicks in. We'll have a 20% chance in the afternoon for an isolated pop up shower or storm. So tomorrow for your Tuesday, 75 starting off cloudy 84 and humid at noon 90 but that 90 will feel more like 97 a 20 percent chance for an isolated shower or storm 90 is still cooler than seasonably average 
but look out toward Del Rio 97 for the high temperature, a little bit more sun toward the Rio Grande. And again, just a few coastal sea breeze showers possible through the end of the week. The weekend looks good, except we could be dealing with another plume of that Saharan dust and heat index value will be close to 100 degrees. So the humidity is not going anywhere. At least we're not technically at 103 like we were last year. Yes. Wow. At least. Thanks, Sarah. All right. I guess if you're going to lose, it's a good time to lose before the Olympic Games even <laughs> in the exhibition season. Yeah. Right. That's what happened to Team USA against Nigeria. But now Pop and Team USA have to take on Patty on the Australian national team after Patty saved the day against Argentina and the Bucks bounce back big time coming up. Tonight is a nice first head coach Greg Popovich in the capacity as head coach of the U.S. Men's Basketball Olympic team will try and recover from their embarrassing loss to Nigeria in their first exhibition game of the weekend in Las Vegas. The Nigerian national team that has former Spur Chemezi Metu as one of their players stunned Team USA with a 90-87 victory for coming into that game as 28 and a half point underdogs. Their head coach is former Spurs assistant Mike Brown who had his team ready to play hitting 23 pointers while Team USA only attempted 24 altogether. Now they face Patty Mills in Australia tonight after Mills hit the game-winning three-pointer at the buzzer to beat Argentina 87-84. That's a talented group of players. That's not a bunch of people off the street playing basketball. So uh, you, you need to understand that every year teams are better and better, and every year one or two or three more NBA players are on their teams. So uh, they're, they're a quality team. Uh, Mike's done a great job with them, and they're as athletic uh, as anybody, and very physical, and they've been practicing for three weeks. All right, tip-off time tonight is at 8 p.m. The Milwaukee Bucks have bounced back. They're losing the first two games of the NBA Finals and finished to take game three in a blowout in Milwaukee last night. For the second straight game, Giannis Antetokounmpo has scored over 40 points, the first player to do that in the finals since Shaquille O'Neal back in 2000. Giannis started off strong, did not look back, gets a rebound on the putback plus the foul, then watch the sweet move that finishes with a dunk. In the second quarter, Giannis starts to get help from Drew Holiday, who struggled in the first two games. He gets a block on Devin Booker, who just held a 10 points behind the back pass to Chris Middleton, back to Holiday, then a Bobby Porters for the slam. The Bucks go on a 10-0 run to go up by 15 at the half, their largest lead in the finals. In the third quarter, Cam Johnson's three-pointer would cut the Bucks' lead to four, but Holiday steps up again with his own three-pointer to score 12 of his 21 points in the period, and Giannis takes advantage of the smaller lineup as part of a 16-0 run to lead 98-76. That lead would grow to as many as 25 as Giannis delivers another dunk to finish with 41, and the Bucks win handedly 120-100. to It was a... a tough lesson for us to learn uh, you know what was coming but um, just didn't do enough consistently to withstand uh, their attacking the paint all right we now know there will be a game five that will be Saturday in Phoenix but before that game four Wednesday live right here on KSA 12 at 8 p.m. all right thank you Greg it's a series it is now yeah <laughs> we'll be right back a few isolated storms along an outflow boundary near Spring Branch in Comal County near Gonzales and Hallettsville. This outflow is moving into San Antonio and Bear County, so temperatures will drop by about five degrees and we could see one or two pop up showers or storms through sunset. It's going to be toasty for the rest of the week and humid too. Thank you, Sarah, and thank you for watching the News at 5. See you back here at 6. World News is next.